Good morning. Just a couple of things I need to uh, point out before we begin this morning. Um, this Thursday, there's no adult Bible class. Thursday morning Bible class will, will not be held. Um, junior and senior high today, looking forward to this laser tag, right? So if you find me in a wheelchair next week, you'll know why. Um, that's junior high and senior high today from 6 to 8 in the grassy area back here. So uh, looking forward to that. And also, don't forget, like on the back, I know Bev's going to say something afterward about the card uh, card making, and then down at the bottom is the breakfast and board games. Uh, to, uh, parents of junior high and senior hires, please pay attention to that for the 12th. And uh, um, there's a sign-up sheet on the gray shelf out there for the breakfast and board games. Uh, let's now turn our hearts and minds to the things of the Lord as we begin our divine service with the singing of Come Holy Ghost, God and Lord. Greetings in our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We welcome you to the Sunday, June 5th, 2022, worship service at Zion Lutheran Church, Lincoln, Illinois. Participating in production of this broadcast are Bill and Diane Breen and Robert Clem. Our organist is Dora Thompson. The opening hymn is number 497, Come Holy Ghost, God and Lord. Hymn number 900, 497, found in the Lutheran service book. Josh and Rachel Welker are sponsoring the flowers on the altar to the glory of God in honor of their 10th wedding anniversary. John and Megan Clem are sponsoring the radio broadcast today to the glory of God in honor of their wedding anniversary on June 7th. Let us rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, 
I, a, a poor, poor miserable sinner, sinner confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now with the psalm appointed for the day. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithfulness, answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore my spirit faints within me. My heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all that you have done. I ponder the work of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Answer me quickly, O Lord. My spirit fails. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear in the morning of your steadfast love, for in you I trust. Make me know the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring my soul out of trouble. And in your steadfast love, you will cut off my enemies, and you will destroy all the adversaries of my soul, for I am your servant. Glory be to God on high.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this day, the day of Pentecost, is from the book of Genesis, the 11th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and its tower, which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are all one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down there and confuse their languages so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The catechetical review. In regards to the sacrament of holy baptism, what benefits does baptism give? It, it works, works forgiveness, for forgiveness of, of sins, sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this as the words and promises of God declare. Which are these words and promises of God? Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Mark, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but to ever not believe will be condemned. The second reading from the book of Acts, the second chapter, beginning at the second verse. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were f all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others mocking said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk as you suppose, 
since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the singing of the Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the gospel of the Lord. Having heard the words of Christ, we confess our common Christian faith through the Nicene Creed. I believe believe in in one one God, God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker maker of of heaven heaven and and earth, earth, and of of all all things things, visible visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the singing of our hymn. The hymn of the day is hymn number 913, O Holy Spirit, Enter In, hymn 913 in the Lutheran Service Book.
the sermon text for this morning from the book of Acts. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all people, and it will come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The words of our text. Grace to you in peace from God our Father, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Amen. Peter, referencing the prophet, tells us what Pentecost is. And in the last days. The day of Pentecost lets you know where you're living, what is going on in the world. You live in the last days. You live in the last days. We have before us the clear sign through the bestowing of the Holy Spirit that the last days are upon us. We're we're not looking for the last days to be getting near. We're in the last days now. Now is the time of repentance. Now is the time of turning to our God for the forgiveness of our sins. For these last days are building towards and carrying us to the last day. The last day is the day of Christ's return in glory to judge both the living and the dead. He will not come as he came the first time, not as a baby in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes, but he will come in all glory and power and majesty and might. And every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now we know that when the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, we hear that there was a sound as a mighty rushing wind. Not a wind, just a sound. A sound like a mighty rushing wind. And divided tongues as of fire. Not fire, as of fire. All this shows what? All of this shows that the Holy Spirit was poured out on the disciples who are assembled in that room. Poured out so what can occur? What can happen? But what the crowd said, we hear them telling in our own language the glorious and mighty works of God. What are those glorious and mighty works of God? They were telling about the atonement. They were telling about the work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They were not babbling or anything like that. They were clearly describing in many and various languages that the people assembled that Jesus Christ was born for them, that Jesus Christ lived a perfect life for them, that Jesus Christ died an innocent death for them, that Jesus Christ has risen and will return again. What did Jesus tell his disciples to do just before he went into heaven, before his ascension? He gave them a very clear, clear activity there to be engaged in. Therefore, go. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. How do we make disciples? We make disciples by baptizing and teaching. Word and sacrament. And both of these are vehicles through which the Holy Spirit works. So the miracle here is not the sound. It is not the visible tongues as of flame that rested over them. The miracle is the proclaiming of God's call to repent of sins and the message of salvation worked through Jesus of Nazareth, who is the Messiah promised by God in the book of Genesis. For Jesus is the one who has crushed the serpent's head. He has won salvation for all of humanity. All of us. Every single one of us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The world, that's all people. Everyone. Everybody. 
And we as church proclaim the knowledge of God through Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit kindles in us the desire to spread the word of Jesus, to teach the word of Jesus, to undertake great things for the word and to strive and to have the gospel at the center of our lives. The mission becomes more urgent and more dangerous as the last days draw nearer and draw closer. Think of the progression of problems that were thrust upon the disciples in in that first century. First, it began with mockery. Hey, look at these, they're drunk. Oh my gosh, what's up with these people? First, it was ridicule and mockery. Then it progressed to the questioning in Acts chapter four. By whose authority do you do these things? And then it moved to threats. They were ordered not to say or teach anything in the name of Jesus, and once more the leaders of the Jews threatened them. And when that did not stifle the good news, the apostles were put in prison. The Sadducees got so jealous they went out and arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. Later, they called the apostles in front of them. They had them beaten once more and ordered them again not to proclaim anything in the name of Jesus Christ. Still, the Spirit worked. The Spirit made them bold to proclaim Christ. They counted themselves blessed to suffer for the name. And some, like Stephen, were stoned to death. In these last days, it is just like St. Paul wrote to Timothy. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers who say to them what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and they will turn aside to myths. Jesus tells us himself what the last days will be like. They will be just like the days of Noah. When the Lord saw that the people on the earth were wicked and that their hearts were always thinking evil, the world was getting worse and worse in God's sight and it was filled with crime and God saw that the world was corrupt And everybody on the earth was living a rotten life. We are now in the last days, and we certainly must not forget that the scripture depicts the generation that perished in the flood as a forerunner of the generation that will be damned in the last judgment. For Christ says, when the Son of Man comes, it will be like the time of Noah. There will be eating and drinking. Men and women were marrying till the day that Noah went into the ark. Then the flood came and destroyed them all. Or it will be like the time of Lot. They were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building. But the day that Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. That is how it will be on the last day when the Son of Man is revealed to us. In the last days, says our God, I will pour out my spirit. Here we are, the last days. From the time of Christ until his second coming, now is the time. Now is the last days. The world will be filled with wickedness and evil, violations of God's will. All these things are the outward manifestation of mankind's rejection of our creator and the call to repent and receives God's forgiveness in the name of Jesus Christ. So what of we believers in these last days? We turn to 1 Peter chapter three and four and we find that we are to bear up patiently in this life. We're to bear patiently under the suffering and the slander that is directed at Christianity. 
since school has been out for the summer. I have tried to be better at reading my Bible. Not just a verse and then a devotion, but chapter upon chapter upon chapter. And one thing has dawned on me, without the word we have little if nothing. I have always proposed to do great things, but it is a litany of failure after failure. Oftentimes, I feel as a guy in a black shirt, but not a pastor. And as I've read the words of the Bible, be moved to ask you for your forgiveness, for my failures, implore the Lord for the strength to endure in the office of the holy ministry. But what about us in these last days? Rather than my words speaking to you, I propose this morning to bring to you from Beck, an American translation of the Bible, who puts it very well. The Apostle Peter writes in 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning at the 8th verse. Finally, all of you, Live in harmony. Be sympathetic. Love your fellow Christians. Be tender-hearted and humble. Don't pay back evil for evil, insult for insult, but bless others. That is what you are called to do to get a blessing. If you want to love life and enjoy happy days, stop speaking evil or saying anything to deceive. Turn away from wrong and do good. Be eager for peace and go after it. The Lord watches the righteous and hears their prayer. But the Lord is against those who do wrong. Who will harm you if you're eager to do good? But even if you suffer because you're righteous, you are happy. Never let others terrify you or trouble you. But make Christ the Holy Lord in your hearts. And always be ready to answer anyone who asks you to explain the hope that you have. But be gentle and respectful. Keep a good conscience so that those who slander your good life in Christ will feel ashamed of their slander. It is better, if God wants it that way, to suffer for doing right than for doing wrong. Now since Christ has suffered for us in his body, you too arm yourselves with the same way of thinking that if you have suffered in your body, you have given up sin. And don't follow human desires anymore, but do what God wants, as long as you live in this world. You spent enough time in the past doing what the world likes to do. When you lived in unbridled immorality, lusts, drunkenness, wild celebrations, drinking parties, and the abominable worship of idols, and they're surprised now that you don't plunge into the same flood of wild living with them, and they slander you. They will have to give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. The dead also once heard the good news so that they will be judged as human beings in their earthly life, but then will live like God by the Spirit. The end of everything is near. So be sensible and keep your heads and clear clear for your prayers. Above all, continue to love one another fervently because love covers many sins. Welcome one another as guests without grumbling. Serve one another, each with the gift he has received, as good managers of the various gifts of God. If you speak, say what God says. If you serve, do it with the strength God gives you, that in every way you glorify God through Jesus Christ. His is the glory and the power. 
Dear friends, don't be surprised that you are being tested by a fiery trial as though something strange were happening to you. But as you share Christ's sufferings, be happy so that you will also enjoy the delights when his glory will be revealed. If you're insulted now for the name of Christ, you're happy because the spirit of glory and power, the spirit of God is resting on you. Of course, none of you should suffer as a murderer, a thief, a criminal, or one who meddles in the affairs of others. But if you suffer for being a Christian, don't feel ashamed, but praise God with that name. It is time for the judgment to start in God's temple, but if it is starting with us, how will it end for those who refuse to listen to God's good news? If it's hard for a righteous person to be saved, what will happen to the ungodly and the sinner? So you too who suffer as God wants you to suffer and trust yourselves to him. You can trust him who created you. Keep on doing good. For his is the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Left, right, front, back, husbands, wives, mothers, children, Fathers, children, friends, neighbors, fellow congregational members. It's good words from Peter for all of us. And as the Spirit rests upon us, let us be aware that we live in the last days. And God grant the Spirit remain with us until Christ's return. Amen. Now may that peace which passes all understanding be in your hearts and minds through the one true faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us rise for the singing of the offertory. You have been sharing in the morning worship at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street in Lincoln, Illinois, where you have just heard Reverend Mark Thompson deliver the message for this morning. If you cannot be physically present, join us every Sunday morning on the radio at 8 o'clock over WLLM 1370 AM or WLLM 105.3 FM or on Facebook Live or on the internet at www.zlclinc.org. Zion is a member congregation of the Worldwide Fellowship of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. If you are without a church home, we invite you to become a part of the Zion family. If we may assist you in any way, please call us at 732-3946 or write to us at Zion Lutheran Church, 205 Pulaski Street, Lincoln, Illinois, 62656. Zion also offers a premier education with a Christian worldview for children from age 3 through the 8th grade at Zion Lutheran School. For more information concerning our school, please contact the school office at 732-3977. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen.
Let us rise for prayer. Gracious Lord, your spirit fills the world and gladdens your church with the remembrance of all Christ Jesus has spoken. Comfort us with divine peace and do not let our hearts be troubled or afraid. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, as you once chose apostles to proclaim the resurrection, so open the mouths of your pastors and people to declare his praises to all who will hear. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Lord God, sustain those who are mocked for believing and confessing the truth of your word, that they may remain faithful to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have poured out your spirit upon us that we might believe your truth and raise our sons and daughters in it. Bless all parents that they may faithfully catechize their children in your word. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Lord of might, preserve your people from their enemies. Bring peace to the nations and prosper the cause of life. Bless our leaders, especially our president, our governor, Congress, legislature, all judges and law enforcement officers. Give them a relentless pursuit of just laws for the common good of all, with a heart of mercy for the weak and the vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Lord of compassion, forget not the sick and the suffering. Grant them healing according to your will especially those whom we know who are recovering from their surgeries, those suffering with the maladies of weaknesses of human flesh, and those who are coming to the end of their earthly life. Give them confidence that you know their need and you will well supply them with all that they need to endure the day of your coming. When all affliction will end and you will grant perfect consummation to us and to all who have loved your appearing. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Lord of grace, your son has come among us and given us the privilege of a place at his table. Prepare us to receive his body and blood with repentance and faith for our good and for the flowering of our lives, flowering in our lives of your holiness and righteousness. Nourish and feed us that in this holy communion we may be strengthened for your service. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Almighty Father, with your Son, Jesus Christ, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts through your word to rule and govern us according to your will. Comfort us in every temptation and misfortune. Defend us against every error that we may continue steadfast in the faith. Increase in love and good works and trusting firmly in your grace for us by his death, obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to come to receive the sacrament of the altar, we do kindly ask that those who are not yet catechized or members of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, refrain from receiving the sacrament. If you would like to come forward and receive a blessing, please cross your arms over your chest so I know to give you a blessing. We continue now with the order of the sacrament as found printed in our worship folder. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and sitting at your right hand, poured out on this day the promised Holy Spirit on his chosen disciples. For all this, the whole earth rejoices with exceeding joy. 
Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Christ will strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and your life everlasting. Depart in his peace.
Let us rise. The true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will strengthen and preserve you in the true faith into life everlasting. Depart in his peace. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee his peace. The closing hymn is number 917, Savior again to thy dear name we raise. Hymn number 917 in the Lutheran service book.
please be seated. Okay, there's a line. Bev, you're first. Why don't you walk down, all three of you walk down to the front here so your voices can project into people's front instead of the back of the head. Okay, and each of you using your outside voices, beginning with Bev. Megan, I assume Vacation Bible School. Thank you, each. Also, uh, in two weeks, we'll be starting uh, the Vacation Bible School preaching cycle, uh, the 10-week cycle of the Tree of Life, and also we'll be starting the study of the Book of Revelation. For this Sunday and next Sunday in the auditorium, I have two videos to show running us up to starting the Book of Revelation. They're by Dr. Lewis Brighton, uh, Missouri Synod's uh, foremost authority on the book of Revelation, and there are pieces from his, his seminary class, so we'll be starting that when I get over there. We'll be watching it on the big screen this morning. I'm going to get it started as soon as possible because it's about 40 minutes long. May the Lord bless all of you, your comings in and your goings out from this time forth and forevermore. Amen.
Thank you very much, and I'll echo Dave's sentiment. I don't know what old is, but it's older than me. 